perfect timing. You, you gotta love live, live, uh, what is this, TV? It's like an action show, but without action, just a bro hawk. All right, guys, we wanna talk about a couple different uh, topics as people are getting onto the live stream. I wanna cover two completely opposite topics, but they are the same. And why they are, well, first off, it's going to be about an energy crisis that is actually happening in Europe right now, and I believe is going to hit the United States in the next uh, three to four weeks. I put two weeks in the comments or in the title, but that's only because the ninja can't count. It's not count ninja, it's economic ninja. So, um, but also I wanna talk about the IRS deadline that's happening. And it's, it's no news, news if you saw it at, uh, uh, if you've been here, part of the channel, you were a subscriber last year, I came out about a week prior to the end of 2021 and I made this uh, literally a dire warning that is gonna affect millions, millions of people around America. And that is literally a trap that was set up by the IRS. And it has to do with, and it was very underreported, all right? It's ironic now, you know, the news stories are out and everyone's paying attention now and it's too late, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you how to turn this into a blessing. Um, but, you know, you know, you got YouTube channels coming out and going over this news, oh, IRS deadline looms, there's no deadline. It, it already happened, it's too late. Everyone's about to be affected. And that is, you're literally gonna have to prove if you have a business or not, and you're gonna have to pay tax on money that was given to you by people when you went to sell things at a garage sale or on Craigslist or Facebook. And that's because the IRS set it up to where they're forcing third-party payment apps to go out and report you. They're gonna send you a 1099 and they're gonna send the IRS a 1099. And if you do not report it, it is actionable. You, they can literally take action against you and put you into an audit. And there's so many, literally millions of people, I believe, around the country that are gonna be affected by this next year, all right? So that's why that whole January deadline looms because you're gonna be filing taxes for this year, but you're gonna be a part of that, all right? Now, both of those situations, both an energy crisis in the EU and here, we can turn those into a blessing. And that's why you watch this channel because it's not about um, the reaction it's taking action before others react, right? When bad news comes, if you are prepared for it, you have the ability to slide into positions and take advantage of situations. I know, isn't this snow cool? I gotta be honest with you. And it's the perfect backdrop for today's live stream because that energy crisis, right? The president said there was a cold winter coming and I told you it wasn't that winter, it's this winter, right? After those uh, midterm elections and that's because they're gonna squeeze the price of energy up. You're already seeing it happen in Qatar. You're seeing it, uh, Qatar, Qatar. You're seeing it in um, Saudi Arabia. They're already, the, the news is already flowing that they're gonna slow the spigots on energy, uh, pulling it out of the ground, which is going to drive prices higher, okay? So let's start with that, okay? We're gonna start with that story and then we're gonna dive into, um, oh, what's it called? We'll dive into the IRS situation, all right? So if you wanna see that, stick around for that. And thanks to everyone that hit the thumbs up. Wakes the algo up, tells YouTube you actually want truth and facts, not, and hope, and not a bunch of smut. All right, or maybe you just want a little bit more brohawk, I'm just gonna say. All right, this is out of Reuters. France strains to avert power cuts as cold snap tests Europe's energy resolve. Now, I want you to imagine, no matter where you are in the world, if you are not in France, if you are not in the EU, I want you to understand that this is coming to a country near you, okay? You are not, you are not out of the woods yet, okay? We are gonna see this. This is gonna become a narrative, right? And the biggest reason is because as the EU gets plunged, plunges into a crisis, right? And power uh, bills spike and the cost of energy skyrockets, what's gonna happen? And we've already seen it um, This in the last six months, uh, natural gas shipments will be diverted to Europe. And you wanna know why? It's be not to go help them. I, I want people to understand, it's not to go help them. It's because energy companies want to sell it to the highest bidder. And when there's a crisis, it's going to the highest bidder, all right? Which is going to, in turn, affect you in your country. Guys, put it down in the comment section. If you are in America or if you're in another country, please put it down. I wanna see who's watching this and sort of get a grasp on, on where um, this information is flowing to, all right? So it says right here, uh, Paris, and let me know if you guys can still hear me. Guys are just doing the job, so cleaning up snow. Um, France expects to avoid electricity cuts on Monday, but faces a difficult week as the first cold snap of the winter tests Europe's resolve to save energy and mitigate the economic impact of the Ukraine war. It says leaders across the region have said, everyone needs to get serious about using less fuel after unusually mild weather. 
until now, had made the task relatively easy. Although Europe's gas storage is almost 90% full after concerted efforts following the disruption of Russian supplies linked to the invasion of Ukraine, a series of nuclear outages, especially in France, are adding to nervousness of outages. And guys, again, that is going to cause the price of energy to skyrocket. Thank you so much, guys, for putting in your locations. Got a lot of people uh, in America. We're seeing people in Canada right now. I think I just saw somebody from the EU actually pop in there. So that's really cool. And, and again, I believe you're going to see that crisis flow from Europe into Canada, then into America. And it's gonna happen in that order, I believe, and that's just because of the distribution of energy and how it flows. Ironically, in America and Canada, we're pumping energy, but we're selling it to higher bidders. We're not keeping it in our own country and keeping the costs low. Uh, something that people need to really think about, right? And that's why it's so important that we vote the right way, even though I know and I believe Sometimes your vote doesn't count, but it does because it sounds funny. It votes now. It counts sometimes not as much at the ballot box. It counts on your social media platforms where you're literally forcing the narrative. You're forcing them because these companies, these social media platforms that are out there to make money, if they try and go woke, they're eventually going to go broke because if you leave that platform, if, you, if you're hitting thumbs down on the things you disagree with and thumbs up on the things you agree with and they're trying to sway you this other way and you leave... They don't sell advertising dollars. So your vote does count in so many different ways, okay? Sorry, I digress. It says a technical glitch briefly cut off power in parts of Paris late on Thursday, prompting one Twitter user to ask, is it starting while posting an image in the street of darkness? It says the country is in focus as, corro um, corrosion, as corrosion has taken a record number of reactors out of action reducing its nuclear output to a 30 year low. Now I'm gonna stop reading this guys. And I'm gonna explain a couple things. I believe not only are there real things happening in the energy sector that are gonna cause uh, widespread shortages, outages and price uh, increases. But I also believe that you're gonna see black swans. And the reason why is because there are people in high positions of power around this world that understand the ability to uh, take a situation and build a bigger narrative and cause panic and fear. You have to watch so many different things that are going on right now. And if you agree with me right now, hit the thumbs up button because this is very truthful. This is very real. And people need to understand this. Policies are put in place during crisis because during crisis, people aren't paying attention. They're just scared and freaked out and they want a solution and they want it now. Look at 9-11. Look at the Patriot Act. Look at how many things were in that that had nothing to do with what we were dealing with with 9-11. It's so very important that people understand that. So when there's a crisis, what they do is they build a narrative, they get people more in fear, and then they get you to agree to, without protesting or rioting in the streets, uh, to things that you normally wouldn't. And there's all of these um, things that are added inside those bills, all right? And I quite frankly believe that this winter, starting January, when we start to see temperatures plummet, like we're starting to see now, and the snow starts to fall and the cold starts to come in and, and really start to attack. I believe actually you're also going to see some incredible weather events in uh, the East Coast that are going to cause massive outages. And so this is the time to get prepared now. This is the time to, if you want to go buy a generator, go buy a generator. Especially guys, <laughs> go buy a solar generator. I mean, it, it's, it's good to be quiet and have your freezer still keeping things cold or being able to keep the lights on. Do it now before everybody goes and runs out there. Don't do it in a panic because you don't have to panic. You're paying attention to the channels like this where we're talking about things that are coming in the future because we're watching current trends. And we're saying, uh, uh, I see where these news stories are going. I see where the action of human beings is driving us, which road we're going down. And we're going to position ourselves and prepare ourselves so that we're not scared, but we're ready to take action on the back end. That's why I've been talking about real estate. Guys, if you haven't followed the Real Estate Ninja, it's my secondary channel. There's so much happening in real estate. Uh, I put different videos, primarily about real estate, but it's because I want to get you ready to take advantage and getting ready for this upcoming collapse in the real estate markets because everything else is gonna be crashing. And it already is. That's what it blows you away. Look at the bond market. Think, think about this. All of the bonds that were uh, made yielding interest rates that were much lower than they are today are becoming less and more and more worthless. They have less value, face value, correct? Because they're producing much less yield. Think about how many bonds were created in the last three years 
at much, even, actually, you know what? Even all the way going back to 2018, 2019, when, when the yield started dropping again because the Federal Reserve dropped its rates, benchmark rate, which brought down the 10, the three, the five-year bond, all those came down, right? Think about all the money that was printed just during the lockdown periods when everything was shut down. Think about all that money that is literally now, those bonds are worth less. Where are those bonds right now? They're in your pension funds. They're in your mutual funds. They're, they're in so many different funds. Um, the the uh, crash is already here. It's happening. This is exactly what happened, but on a much faster pace. The acceleration of this crash compared to what I went through after I'd sold all my real estate in 2006 and I'd liquidated everything and I kept three properties. That's, that's it. And I'm going to be honest with you. Those almost took me out and I learned so many lessons. And I promise, I said it to myself, especially when I missed out on buying that winery, I said, I will never not be ready again. Missed out on a winery, two and a half million dollars. It's worth now about 35, $40 million. But I couldn't scratch up enough cash to make that happen. And I watched a big corporation come in and buy it. Now I'm going to still buy that. I'm going to buy that place. And we're going to have the Ninja Castle. Now my best friend built the place. It's literally a castle. It's incredible. Big moat. I think I've done a video out there. If not, I got to get Charlie out there. All right, let's switch gears now. Now we're going to move into the IRS. And this is a very big deal because I'm not joking. It was a trap set. Very little news play. As a matter of fact, the video I did on it almost this time last year was my best performing video. I think 30,000 of you uh, came onto the channel. And please let me know if, if that was the video that brought you here to this channel. And it was a warning that you have two weeks before the IRS implements this rule that if you are using third-party payment apps and you're selling things, and you don't even know it's happening. You sell something to someone at a garage sale or on Craigslist or on Facebook, or you go buy a car or sell a car and somebody pays you through Venmo, PayPal, anything. There, every single third party payment app that is out there, everything, Apple Pay, Google Pay, every app, okay? Please don't ask me if it includes this one. Or, I mean, hey, you know what? Throw it in the comment section. It's great for the algo. Zelle, all these things. They are now required after you make $600 or more in the entire calendar year, right? To send you and the IRS a 1099. So now if you do not know that, you have changed addresses, you missed the email because it's going to spam or you changed emails, whatever, or you get it and you don't think much of it and you do not include that in your tax return. That is now opening you up to an audit. And I want people to understand this. Please understand this because I know a couple of people, they're not that bright. I mean, I'm not joking. They are dumb. And I only got to say that because they're dumb. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. When they hired, when uh, the president hired those thousands and thousands and thousands of IRS uh, agents, they weren't for the rich people. I'm not joking. There are tax laws changing so rapidly. I'll give you another example real quick, and then we're going to dive back into the IRS thing and how, how you're going to turn this into a blessing, all right? It's not a curse. It's a blessing. That's what being prepared means. Um, when you own a business, and I own a handful of them, and this is why I started that side hustle course, because I think it's so vital that people know these little tiny nuts and bolts, these little nuggets of information that can save them hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars today, but then literally going on throughout your life. You never change up. You keep that going, and you're literally saving thousands of dollars down the road. Um, one blessing of, uh, in the tax code has been uh, the 179 deduction or accelerated depreciation. And if you, under the tax code, and guys, I'm not a tax uh, authority, not a CPA or anything like that, tax professional, but I read a lot of tax books, right? Because a penny saved is a penny earned. So if you save money in the, on the tax, on your taxes, that's money in your pocket that you go get to spend somewhere else, right? Invest somewhere else. The 179 accelerated deduction uh, allows you to purchase a vehicle weighing over 6,000 pounds, 6,000 pounds or more, and you get to write it all off in one whack. President Trump changed it. Now, that used to be had to be a brand new vehicle, right? Because they wanted to also spur the auto industry. And really, that took off after the 08 crisis. Um, Trump added it to where you could even buy used cars. So people like me that want to save money, get more bang for their buck, could buy or couldn't afford a new car, didn't want to buy a new car, truck. I could buy a used piece of equipment and then write it all off, right? That law is changing to now you will not no longer be able to write 100% of the cost of that vehicle off starting next year. 
My point being is this, those agents were not hired to take money from the rich, okay? That is exactly the lie they conned all of us in around 1910, 1911, around there, when the IRS was formed. And they said, uh, and I'm blanking on the date. If you guys remember the date the IRS was formed, throw it out there. The day, they, they said, this, we're gonna tax the rich. We're not gonna tax the poor. We're not gonna tax the middle class. We're gonna tax the rich. And everybody, because they weren't rich and they wanted to be rich, they wanted to get the bad rich people, they yeah, get them. And then slowly over time, the boiling frog uh, theory came to pass and we were all boiling frogs over the last century. And now everybody's getting taxed and you're getting taxed crazy amounts. The tax code is built to benefit those that have a business. And that's what we're tying this into, this live stream into right now, okay? Because they've set a trap for millions of Americans to open them up to audits. You see, it's easier to steal a little bit of money from the masses that nobody cares. It goes unchecked. Then take a, like what you think is a big chunk of money from 1% of the nation. Literally 1%. I believe, uh, guys, put it in the comment section. The top 1% of America make over $650,000 a year. If, if I'm right, I'm pretty sure that's that's the number, that you're considered elite if you make over $650,000 in wages per year, all right? So my, my point being is that this is their plan, all right? They set this trap. Now, it's opened up all kinds of people to this plan, this trap to be able to open you up to an audit. Not saying they're going to do it in mass, but they're going to pick certain people. Now, we've seen that recently too. We've seen that around 2016 where certain groups were targeted by the IRS. Very serious times we're seeing here, guys. And that's why this, like messages like this need to get out. Now, here's the benefit. Okay. You may be in a position where you get yourself a 10. Thank you so much, Frank. I need, I just had a highly inflated cup of coffee up here at this lodge and holy cow, I appreciate that uh, super chat. Thank you. Um, you know, this is where you're gonna turn into a blessing, guys. And I, I really mean this. You get a 1099. You now have to figure out a cost basis for those items. Now, a lot of people will just real quick, just lie, squiggle down some numbers and go, yeah, I paid this much. In an audit, they're really gonna want more proof than that. If it's only a few items, they're gonna let it glow, uh, shine, slide. Glow, shine, slide. They're gonna let it slide. People like me, when I bought my first house, I was literally selling electric trains and made like $20,000 selling electric trains on eBay in like 1999 and bought my first home with it, right? I, it took me like, I think six months, maybe a year to save up 20,000 bucks on eBay, right? There are people like me out there all over the place that are out crushing it in garage sales that are literally making 50,000, $60,000 a year. Uh, as a matter of fact, a buddy of mine, Kevin, is one of those guys. He's making, he's out there crushing it, right? And that's that's what I want to see. I want to see you out there crushing it, saving money, building your assets, getting out of debt, getting ready for the big win. The big win, generational wealth, comes through real estate. That's it. it because of cash flow and tax write-offs, right? That's the big one. That's how you make it. That is how you become wealthy. That's how I made my first million. That's how I want you to make your first million. It is literally easy, but you need those little steps, so you're going to have a 1099. What do you do? Well, now you start looking at legal tax write-offs that you deserve, that you get, because yeah, you know what? I had this buying and selling stuff. I was selling a bunch of stuff uh, in a garage sale. You come up with a ledger. You come up with a notes, a way of taking notes. And you go, yeah, I remember I looked back on my PayPal and I sold 300 bucks worth of stuff on this day. 300, and it might not even say what it is. You may have to figure that out and go, just write stuff down. And oh, yeah, I remember paying this much. I remember paying that much. And you, you ink out a profit, let's say. And you're like, oh man, but I have to pay tax on that. But you haven't started looking at the tax benefits that you get. And again, I'm not a, I, I advise you to go talk to tax professionals. I got to say that, right? Because I'm not a tax professional. But I never sought out tax professionals through paying them hourly wages. I went out, or consulting fees, I went and bought tons of books on it on how to do this. I bought courses and then I learned the tax code. As a matter of fact, I got so darn good at it. I was constantly telling people that they were, um, the, the tax professionals like, well, you have to do it this way. And they go, no, it's not that way. And they go, no, no, here, it says it right here in the code. And they would be shocked. Even tax professionals don't know everything. That's why if you find a tax professional, um, you want to ask them questions like, do you own your own business outside of being a tax professional, right? Uh, especially, you know, it's good if they own their own tax business because they have a little bit of background in writing off their own taxes, right? Um, 
my point being is that you want to find out if they own real estate on the outside, if they know how to, to look for write-offs for themselves, not only for you. A lot of people in this world, you know, wear a name badge, a realtor name badge, a tax professional name badge, um, and they don't know everything about the business. They're just there the nine to five to show up, make their money and walk away. And a lot of the times they give bad advice, especially on the real estate side. And guys, I'm the worst real estate agent you're ever going to meet. Why? Because I'm an investor and I like to try and help people make money because I don't believe that I can become successful and wealthy or wealthier without making other people wealthy. And that's how it works in this world. Hold on a second. I'm already cold. All right, that was officially the first snowball I threw. I did it live. I've been super pumped. It hasn't snowed all weekend and it's Mrs. Ninja's birthday, little note, and it's snowing on her birthday. And it's only the third time she's ever seen snowfall. So it's super, super exciting day for me and my family. Guys, point being is this. These are bad things that are coming if you're not ready for it. I want you ready. I want you to charge the the mountains. Someone said that made their arm hurt. <laughs> All right, guys, I want to answer a couple questions, okay? Because this wouldn't be a good proper live stream without answering some questions. So if you guys can jump in there real quick. Hey, Kevin, the weed man, thank you for jumping on. There's so many amazing people, by the way, that are always commenting and are they're such a blessing. And I want to throw out a little shout out to Ryan Doyle. Ryan has always, always commented on every single one of my videos in like almost two years. It's absolutely insane. Such a cheerleader for me. And I'm not joking. It means a lot. Um, hi, Neil, how are you doing? Thank you so much for moderating, by the way. So guys, throw out, a, throw out a comment, your question. You got me right here. How can you write off haircuts? That is a really good question. So you know what's funny? You can't. I've tried. I'm not joking. I literally looked that up. I go, wait a minute. The Brohawk is sort of the staple of this channel. There's nothing else there besides a bicycle, some cardboard notes. It's, that's all there is. And the IRS went, yeah, no. Because you, you already have to have your haircut, ninja. And just, you know, they, they we're on a first name basis. Um, so someone says they haven't paid for a haircut their entire life, probably because they just shaved their head. I would just throw that out. But hey, bald is beautiful, man. Just, just run with it. Um, someone's asking if I missed the fire department. Yes. Yes, I do. I actually do. I, I, I miss the guys. I miss the guys. I miss the camaraderie. But I'll be back. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, here you go. Here's a question. Should we get groups together to buy real estate? I would actually say no. And, and uh, there's, it's a two-part question. That's a great question. First off, if you've never bought real estate before, you need to, to learn how to buy your own home. And, and the importance of looking at different types of real estate and the different benefits, the pros and cons of different types of real estate. And that's, I put that in the, real, the side hustle course because people couldn't stop asking about that. Like, is it time to buy? Is it time to buy? And I'm like, when are you going to come out with that real estate course? I'm like, not yet, because I don't want to literally give a loaded financial, you know, weapon, a pew pew, uh, a metaphorically, to people that are going to race out as we're about to see interest rates explode and go down, right? So you need to buy your own home and start out with a, a rent or two. Um, groups are, are a powerful thing. The problem is, and I've, I've had, and it goes back to another class I did in the side hustle course, the importance of picking the right uh, the right partners. You know, I've had uh, great success. I've also had great failure with partners. And, um, you know, uh, LLPs or limited liability partnerships um, that are formed or LLCs with the intent of owning real estate in a co-op, very difficult. And so I would suggest going on your own. And, and I, I know you can. You know, me and my wife in the early 2000s, when real estate was smoking, we were averaging in our peak six, uh, a, pro a new property every six to eight weeks. And it was just me and my wife. I had contractors that I would pay. I would do a lot of the work um, on my fix and flips. Um, and we were a one-stop shop. We did it all. Now we were able to amass a pretty good clip of wealth doing that. Um, but, uh, you know, what I, I say is if you buy real estate properly at the right time, you know, it's, it's all about how big you want to be. And as long as you use 1031 exchanges, as long as they're available to your benefit, you are going to continue to grow a good clip of wealth. 
uh, because you could always move up in the size of property. So I am one of those people that, uh, you know, I have partners and they have their spots, but boy, you really need to be on top of your own game and understand the real estate game to be able to flesh out. And I mean that it literally flesh out the, uh, the con men and women of this world when it comes to real estate purchases. All right. Um, here we go. Check this out. Here's a good question. Can I write off my loss, my losses on reverb for selling my gear? I'm a guitar player and collector, and a lot of my stuff goes for around 50% of my purchase price. You absolutely can. The only problem is you're going to need to be able to show purchase prices. Now, um, let me give you a little caveat. This is not financial advice or tax advice. Um, the, you know, going into audits, you need to be able to show intent that you did everything you can to, um, to document everything you could. Uh, about how much you paid. Like a lot of people lose receipts. So if it was me and I was in that situation, I bought, let's say a guitar and I used it, played it and I sold it for a 50% loss. I would show the sell price. Then I would also, if I didn't have the receipt, I would go through and look up prices of them new. And, and then I would, I would document to the best of my ability, the date that I bought it on. And then I would print off the picture of that, the, the ad, how much they cost brand new. And then I would, I would put that into a file. It's because an, an auditor is looking for your intent. You know, are you trying to screw them? Are you being malicious? And really, you're dealing with human beings here, right? And so when you show pure intent, uh, you can put that in as, as a write-off. But again, you do that, uh, you bring, put, bring to your, uh, your enrolled agent or accountant, CPA, all of your documentation neat and clean so that they can make uh, the proper uh, filings for you. And yes, you absolutely can write it off. But on top of that, you get to write off more. If you're selling a good clip of things, you're not just dealing with one or two items. You literally have a business in your hands, which means there's all kinds of legal tax write-offs that you can afford at, that you can have. I mean, honestly, let me give you an example. And, and again, I wanted to write that course in a way that it was all of my experiences through all of my side hustles. But this channel, this YouTube channel became a side hustle. I never thought it would. I just started posting videos about cryptocurrencies, about real estate, things that I liked, uh, lessons I'd learned, and it exploded, right? And now it is a media company. Now, now that brings legal tax write-offs wherever I go. And every, every side hustle I've ever done the focus was about the tax savings. Using my life and making money through you know, selling tractors or having the palm tree farm, real estate sales, um, all of my, I mean, everything I've done. I think I've had over 20, I did a video, I've had over 20 side hustles in my life. Baseball card shop, things like that. I would be able to write off my lifestyle. When you go on a trip, you should be able to write it off with your family because you're doing work where you're going. You're, you're, you, you have to go somewhere to do work, but you're also enjoying yourself. I remember flipping tractors, dropping my family off at Disneyland with the truck and trailer, dropped them off at Disneyland. They went in because they had a season pass, and this was a long time ago before they went woke. Um, but uh, I would go pick up a tractor, come back, park it in the RV slot, go in and, and enjoy the day. But I got to write off all the fuel down on the way there and back. I got to write off the meals because we had to go to pick up the tractor and we sold the tractor. And the, we had the cost basis all set up. And that's what I want for you guys. See, in, right now, this next year, you're going to see panic setting in with your friends and family if they've ever sold anything. And they're going to get these 1099s and they're going to, what the heck? I just literally had a garage sale and sold my crap. Yeah, well, you gotta prove to them that you're not a business because you, you literally sold like, like five to $6,000 worth of stuff. Now, think about that. Uh, you sold a car. What do you mean I gotta prove that I'm a, a bit, you gotta, you know, think about that. It's, it's literally a trap and it's a big deal. So guys, I gotta go. I'm gonna go have some breakfast with my family and friends. I'm gonna go enjoy this snow, make a snow ninja. It's gonna be amazing. Just gonna see some fat white dude with steam just out there. Am I done yet? Hope you guys have a great day. The Economic Ninja is out.